good. You're a badass. You're so badass. You spread joy. You spread joy. Welcome. We're back. Ep it's episode 22. Today we are going to be talking about a lot of things. Namely, the recent short attack on Islip's face, also known as Elf Cosmetics. Elf Beauty. Eyes Love Face? Eyes Lips Face. Can you believe this? I guy? thought you said love. Jeez, can you have you? I honestly wish we could run the tape back real quick because I could have sworn you said Eyes, eyes Lips Face. Eyes Lips Face. I would never say that. Clearly, someone hasn't had a girlfriend in a long time because every guy I know knows what Eyes Lips Face is. I thought you said Eyes Love Face. Well, they do. Eyes love being on face. Mine sure love being on face. Also, we're going to be talking about uh, CPI numbers that came out and it made the stock market go boom to the up, meaning good. And also Omegle's shut down. And also uh, some, some wisdom, words of wisdom from walking corpse billionaire Charlie Munger, who is 99 years old and just flat out refuses to die. So he's doling and out some, some Warren Buffett advice. Yeah, and some Warren Buffett advice. Pretty good advice, so stick around if you want some solid, sage, financial and life, life advice. advice. Yeah, Here's uh, how to succeed. Mm. So let's get right into it, huh? So what is a short attack? No, it's not when... It's not when you um, break onto the set of uh, Top Gun 3 and Tom Cruise comes out through your ass. That's very good. That's very good. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's short. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anywho, it's, it's well, short. Or when the governor of Florida... Keep going. Uh, you know, he, Ron DeSantis. <clears throat> he, he starts marching his ass in his, in his little high-heeled dress shoes. Yeah. After you. Shorts freak out. Or when your short shorts freak out and they choke you, you said, Dylan? Like yeah, that. yeah. Exactly. We got it. <clears throat> well, no, not that kind of short attack. This is the kind of short attack where... Um, too short from... Jesus. Just let me get to it. <laughs> so, also, excuse my throat. I was... Uh, they know. They watched last week. We had sinus things in New York. Yeah, we had sinus We're getting things. over it. So, so I, as we all know, shorting a stock <clears throat> means you are betting against it, meaning you think it's going down. So a short attack is when basically this research group called uh, Spruce Point Capital came out with a research report that we will be going over. Spruce Point Management, excuse me. They, they put together this report nailing elf beauty and proclaiming that it is a short from here. So I actually, I went on Spruce Point Cap's... Um, Have you watched their YouTube video? I think Spruce Point? Yeah. No, you should it's, send it to me. It's only two minutes, and I think it's worth watching because it's... Uh, it lays out what's happening, and it's also so funny. I okay, just, I great. Just, I just love a C, them, them trotting out the CIO of, um, of, of Spruce Point Capital. He is uh, what I would maybe describe as not camera ready. And <laughs> sure. Well, it's a good <laughs> not camera ready. And uh, well, wait, wait. Before we show this, I I do want to show. Um, there is uh, l look at their website. So Spruce Point Capitals or Sp Spruce Point Management, but it's SprucePointCap.com. They've got a ton of short reports on all sorts of stocks. I mean, you keep going on there. They've got they covered. Um, they've been around since wow, at least 2010. But uh, oh wow, I remember Liquid Metals. They put out these short reports, and some of them work in the sense that they actually, the stock ends up taking a hit, not necessarily due to them, but maybe they might have exposed something to the market that everybody else didn't know about. But I love these, look at these really, look at these, like they put out a short report on iRobot, which is the company that makes Roombas. Um, and for the audio listener, it's just a, the thumbnail is, a, it looks like a, a ninja and there's like a, a flaming Roomba. It's just all really poorly photoshopped or like AI generated images. <laughs> I mean, this one, this one is just a guy with a Pinocchio nose. Uh, but yes, not all of them work out. I mean, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one for premiere there's one called premiere ink and it's it's just like a calm looking dead body well, like <laughs> kind a, of a nasty dead body yeah it's like a nasty shitty looking dead body oh look at this one for church and dwight co these are just it just says these are just boxes of condoms i'd like to know what's going on at church and dwight co yeah here's one for Sintas corp the uh the company that that does like industrial level dry cleaning an laundry. absolute disaster at Ca- Canadian Tire Corp. Yeah, there's just there's a guy sitting on a fire while two t- two <laughs> trucks two trucks are just like falling into a hole. Oh, here's another person in a bed. But and look what's on the monitor. It says so. Oh Jesus Christ! But like for so they're they're not always a hit. Um, here's Dropbox one for Dropbox, and it's just a mouse on a table. Anyway. They did one for SMCI in January of this year, and since then the stock has nearly quintupled. Okay, so, so it's maybe, not uh, an exact science. So, and by the way, this is maybe also take Spruce Point's advice with a grain of salt here. Sure, and we are also obviously it goes without saying, but we will say it anyway. We are not endorsing their report. We are simply sharing it because it is very entertaining. Yes, and very fascinating. So that's and I'm deeply invested uh, in Elf in in Islip's face. Islip's love face. Eyes love face. Love, Eyes face. love face. Look at this one for Oatly, real fast. It is a cow drinking spilt shitty chocolate oat milk. Very funny. Don't just, cry over spilt oat milk. Oh man, some of these are just really good. I'd like to get someone from Spruce to uh, just talk about who does their graphic design. Well, and the best thing about this is the Elf Beauty one. They have a nice image of the Grinch here. Yeah, stealing, uh, the Grink. The Grink. Yeah. So was the Grink there? <laughs> so also, they are not the only ones who do this kind of thing. There's another company. There's another group called Citron. Uh, there's you Hindenburg. Probably heard about, yeah, the Hindenburg had a, a couple high profile ones. Adani was a huge one. Yeah, the last Indian year. company. Um, what was their other really big one? Oh, I'm blanking. I'm blanking too. Anyway, let's let's watch this video, huh? Here we go. Let's see what the CIO has to say. Hi, Ben Axel here, CIO and founder of Spruce Point Capital Management with an explosive and concerning new report on Elf Beauty, the ticker's ELF. Now they're a marketer of cosmetics. As a result, their brand equity is highly sensitive to their alignment with females. In fact, we estimate over- Jesus Christ, dude, get a fucking external microphone, man. It's also all so reminiscent of like the images they create to where it's just like, no thought going into it. They're just like, sure, that's that's good enough. (laughs) Yeah, Jesus God. How many views does this have? 290. 290 views. Wow. Over 80% of the customers, 75% of the workforce, and two-thirds of the board are women. In addition, 60% of the revenue is to Target, Walmart, and Ulta Beauty. So else- wait, wait, pause it. Do you hear him suck in every time he's been... <laughs> so every time, the, there's a lot of women. So they sell to Target, Ulta, Walmart. Values have to be aligned with its channel partners. Now, this company's had... <laughs> quite the bit of success in the past couple years due to viral TikTok and social media marketing campaigns. But guess what? (laughs) They partnered with to lead these endeavors. A firm called Keith Shakers. And the two co-founders were members of the Nexium cult. Some of you may know that Keith Raniere, the Vanguard cult leader, was sentenced to 120... I'm going to (laughs) go... He's got to be making these himself. He's going to be making these himself. For the audio listener, he's talking about Keith Rainier, the, the leader of Nexium cult. And uh, he said he was sentenced to 120 years in prison. And this like comic book pop art. That looks like when Batman hits someone in the face and goes, pow! Yeah, it says 120 years in prison. <laughs> I'm going to speed it up even more because this is kind of funny to me. 20 years in prison for sex trafficking of women. Now, just to be certain, the two co-founders weren't implicated or alleged to have done anything wrong, but we find concerning evidence that they continue... <laughs> First of all, I can't understand what he's saying anymore because it's Slow too it fast. Down. Uh, well, because we're going to be getting into it. I don't want him to, to right, spoil right, right. the thing. But it's just so... It's just, the graphics are just... Folks, I wish you could see it. God, I wish you could see it. Audio listener, you got to get with the program. You really do. But, like, fucking hire a video intern or something. He can... He turned this whole thing around. Yeah, Jesus God. He's doing it from his house with no external mic. Yeah. Um, Using word art. Oh, shit. I forgot to promote our latest episode of Ben and Emil on splitting the bill. 
by the way. I guess I just did. Great. Go, go watch that. Yeah, go watch that. <laughs> watch our new series. Follow us on socials. Our next call-in bonus episode is going to be this month. So go sign up on Patreon if you haven't yet. Uh, okay, so right into the presentation. Let's, let's dive into this thing, shall we? And I was, re- I was looking at it last night, and I, was only re- I only read the first two pages, and I thought, oh, this succinctly sums it up. But there's so much more here, and it's not as... It's, I, I kept going back and forth between thinking, okay, this is all bullshit, and no, the, he's actually got some good points here. So we're going to kind of dissect it. But first of all, it is worth noting that Elf's stock has 10 x in the last couple of years. It's no. gone from like <clears throat> the teens to well over $100. It, it went from just kind of being... Not not a dud, but just it hadn't gone anywhere. It had been teetering between like ten dollars and fifteen dollars for years, and then yeah, it blew up, due in part, or uh, so according to Spruce Point, due in part to them hiring this uh, marketing TikTok marketing company. Yeah, and they started blasting it, just absolutely blasting their shit all over TikTok. Movers and shakers, baby. <laughs> That's the name of the marketing firm. I wish I had paid attention to that, man. I wish I, uh, I mean, a, a girlfriend, several, surprise everybody. Yeah, I know. I always reference an ex-girlfriend, but she. Are man, they giving you shit for that? Yeah, they've given me shit for that. But this, uh, this ex-girlfriend from years ago was like, oh, you should buy stock in Elf. No way. It's cheap makeup and it's like fine. And I said, yeah, that's interesting because it was valued at under a billion dollars. And I thought, surely that's, and I just, I didn't do it. This episode's going to be titled. Should we listen to women? Okay. <laughs> That's a little <laughs> risky given what <laughs> the subject matter is here. But so should we sum this up? So they, they, they say after conducting a forensic review of Elf Beauty, a multi brand company that offers cosmetics and skincare products, we have grave concerns about its continuing brand equity given its business relationship with Movers and Shakers, a marketing firm with ties to, no- to the notorious Nexium cult with its, quote, joy messaging that appears to be eerily similar to the cult's Science of Joy teachings. So what is the Nexium cult, or what was it, Emil, since you, you know better than most? Look, it was a it was a clubhouse for people, you know. It was um, pretty. It was innocent, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. We just the the government started snooping around, putting their nose in things that um, they shouldn't have had their nose in, and and it shut down a a, a, pl- a place, a home for a lot of people where where they could come get help and and maybe work on themselves. Yeah, what happened to the the leader of this cult, Keith Rainier? Pow! One hundred twenty years in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah, there were allegations of, or he was convicted uh, for racketeering, sex trafficking of women, forced labor conspiracy, and wire fraud conspiracy. So a total loser, in other words, a big old loser, a mega, a mega jerk. You know, Just, we, didn't, we don't like him. But uh, so, according to Spruce Point, they estimate that at least eighty percent of Elf's customers, seventy nine percent of its employees, and sixty six percent of its board members are women. As a result, we believe Elf's brand equity and success is dependent on policies and practices in support of women's rights and health concerns. So they're right. Elf themselves are even like aware of this risk factor. They they yes. stated in their own um, disclosures, like any. This is a, a quote. Any damage to our reputation or brands may materially and adversely affect our business financial condition and results of end results of operations and that vendors could harm our brands. Right. And that's I mean, that's something that's just like lawyer speak that is in. It's really interesting. If you ever are curious about what a company, um, their risks are, they'll tell you point like flat out what all the potential risks are. And they really do cover everything. So go into quarterly filings for Google or whatever or elf and see uh in the disc uh, there's like a disclosure not disclosure section but like risk yeah risk section but so elf starts working with this company called movers and shakers and spruce point is alleging that movers and shakers founders uh, well so they say right here while it is important to recognize that neither of movers and shakers founders were alleged to have committed or have been charged with any wrongdoing 
We find alarming evidence to suggest that Movers and Shakers and or its founders may have continuing sympathy and or affiliation with the teachings of Nexium and former members who continue to support both Rainier and the cult. Right. He's talking about, I don't, have you mentioned here that this is Evan Horowitz and Jeffrey Goldberg. They, uh, they're the principals of Movers and Shakers, <clears throat> the primary faces. Um, the main guy is Evan Horowitz, and apparently he was... Uh, he had this thing called like the executive success program um, and people were pulling up his old websites. I mean, the stuff, it's all very like wellness speak and yeah. that kind of cult thing that makes you kind of want to crawl out of your skin. Evan has consistently helped others bring more awesomeness to their lives. When he discovered executive success programs in 2011, he applied its revolutionary methodology to build a career out of his hobby of helping friends with their businesses. He enabled his clients at everyone, Evan Horowitz advising to achieve 30 to 300% revenue growth within 12 months. And by applying the tools he gained numbers. in ESP, Evan quadrupled his own revenue in one year. After decades of coaching and training and degrees from Stanford and Harvard, Evan immediately recognized how the different tools of ESP were from anything else he had done. He now advises others using ESP as ESP's proprietary system so that more leaders may achieve greater personal fulfillment and accelerated impact on the world. Fuck, man. I got to get my own Does proprietary system. jacked up? Yeah, it gets me jacked up to increase views by 300%. <laughs> Maybe we should hire movers and shakers. We should. <clears throat> if anybody out there has a connection to movers and shakers, please let us know. No, I'm just kidding. We don't want to work with these people. But so that proprietary system they were talking about, it's uh, it's the like rational inquiry thing that um, that was like the curriculum for Nexium's leader. Yeah. Well, so not so Spruce Point also just to go back to the uh, the presentation here. They point out I mean, it's kind of just they're pointing out that they're not without any kind of scandal before uh noting that they've have settled charges that they used sanctioned products from North Korea. Dude, that's like I'm I'm like you're burying the lead with this fucking Nexium connection. I mean, yeah, that's th that, yeah. and then the they uh, sentenced uh, one of its board members uh, was involved in a college admission fraud scandal and was sentenced to prison. They also acquired nat Naturium nat nat Naturium for three hundred and fifty five million dollars, despite numerous critics alleging the founder committed fraud by failing to adhere to F FTC guidelines around marketing products that she had a financial interest in. That's a big acquisition for a company Elf's size. Yeah, it's also so great. They, um, he paid. So, the the guy who was discharged from the company, McGlashan, had pleaded not guilty to charges. That's from his first name. No, that's uh, his second. His his last, last name. Last name. Mm -hmm. Bill McGlashan had pleaded not guilty to charges from the U.S. Justice Department that he paid fifty thousand dollars to to have his son's ACT admissions exam results doctored and agreed to pay another two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a fake football profile to get his son into USC. Hell yeah, dude. God. He uh, does he cares about his son. That's I'd, what I what what my defense would be is this your honor, this is a man who loves his son. <laughs> nothing more, <laughs> nothing less. He didn't know that this was a crime. He thought that he was just greasing the wheels. He wants his son to be able to join a frat at USC. He wants his son to get tackled. And if that's a crime, truly, I mean this kid's going to get clobbered out there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll tackle your kid for ten grand, buddy. You don't need to pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars for one of these fake football profiles. Jesus. So, Spruce Point is saying that. I mean, we're we're gonna get more into it, but so a couple important things to note. Apparently, Movers and Shakers was recently acquired by this company called Stagwell on November second for fifteen million dollars. We gotta start a marketing company she dude i want to start one of these phony things that like executives feel like they they need us yeah. to turn their shit around oh my god yeah though movers and shakers is unlikely to be a material material contributor to stagwell's two and a half billion dollars of revenue we believe it is a material factor in elf's continued success with its female and gen z customer base as a result we not us but uh spruce point is short elf they're saying that they trade at a large premium to cosmetic and beauty companies on the belief that its 20% plus revenue growth is sustainable. If Elf's retail partners or end female customers revolted at its joy and, quote, badass messages while re realizing that movers and shakers founders remain connected to Nexium loyalists, we could see 45% to 65% downside risk to Elf's share price as recent sales momentum evaporates. Currently, Elf's sitting at just under $5 billion uh, valuation. 
It must be so annoying that now you ev- every brand has to pretend like they're a good brand. Yeah, man. I mean, that, yes. Must have been so nice to just be like, I don't know, we're shitty, we're shitty guys, buy our shit. Yeah, I, if I were running a brand, I would lean into just being brand. And not like well, I'm trying to not be. <clears throat> but anything. you can't. The whole that's the thing. Elf's own brand values and superpowers stress, among other things, that it is guided to one, do the right thing; two, execute with speed and quality; and three, operate cruelty free with respect to animals. But by extension, we believe all living beings. Hmm. We should start a, a pro cruelty makeup company where we're just cruel to <clears throat> men, but it has nothing to do with testing the makeup. It's just. We've got a guy strapped to a chair in a closet somewhere. No, but we got to test the makeup on him. We insult him and we test it. We don't need to test the makeup on him because we know it's good. Our shit is good. And that's what we have those chimps for. (laughs) Yeah, we have monkeys that we tested on. But we got this guy. His name is... Dylan. Dylan. (laughs) And we just torment this guy all day, verbally and physically. We're not like hurting him and we let him go at the end of every day. But he's, he's... He's the guy that we are cruel to. (laughs) Shut up in there, bitch. So, as uh, I was going to call you Elon. Like as a joke or you thought? As accidentally, my brain, I was crossing wires. That's awful. So, as my esteemed colleague Emil has already pointed out, Elf lists in in its material risks that any damage to their reputation or brands may materially and adversely affect their business, financial condition, and results of operations, and that they rely on third-party suppliers, manufacturers, distributors, and other vendors, and they may not continue to produce products or provide services that are consistent with our standard, and they may harm our brands or cause consumer satisfaction, dissatisfaction. Yeah, we wouldn't want someone to do a TikTok about how we're, uh, we're not on the up and up. This was the most, this is a pretty interesting slide. So they're saying that they believe Elf's recent success is directly correlated with its creative TikTok and Gen Z viral marketing campaigns led by movers and shakers. So, I mean, Evan, this is also the worst thing about not only do you have to be good, but yeah. every, even if you're just a small business, you have to be on TikTok. Have yeah. you, you ever seen like a, a, those, those TikToks that go viral of just like a dentist's office? Yes. And it's the dentist like coming out with a giant toothbrush, like doing some fucking dance. And then his, Poor fucking dental assistant has to like be like, God, I just want to go to work. I don't want to do this. Or that kid who was in charge. There was a kid like last year who went viral because he, it was like a a car repair garage, and he's he made some shitty TikTok of like a giant cat dancing above the building, and it it was great though, and he said like my boss said he'll give me a raise if I can hit a million views. Yo, make this go viral. It oh, was great. okay, good for him. Do you know what I'm talking about? Fuck. But if I was if if that was my dentist and I saw it, I'd switch dentists. Yeah, me too. I'd go get get back get, get back to in, in the chair. I went to the dentist recently. You know how long? You know how late they were? Had me sitting in the chair waiting an hour. An hour, and I was sitting there going, "I'm about to fucking leave," and I've never done that before. I I was getting. I'm a pretty patient guy when it comes to that kind of shit. I'm very understanding. And they're oh, it's just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. I'm like I'm starting to go like ripping some. Hey, you know I got out. shit to do. Clean my mouth. <laughs> anyway, Evan, what was his name? Spielberg? Evan Horowitz? Yeah, he, I mean, he was onto something when he said, when he was boasting about his accolades. Look at this shit, man. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't argue with it. 10X. They, the, the stock absolutely rallied. At the crux of this, they're saying that Movers and Shakers is so tightly uh, correlated with Nexium, and that is problematic for Elf, because if word were to get out that they're linked to this Nexium cultish right. marketing firm, the backlash would be so great that it would harm their sales, and that Target and Walmart and Ulta might pull their product, right? And I, honestly, I'm having a hard time finding this convincing. I also, I was having a hard time like the use of like badass is not. I would never link that to Nexium, and I get that they were showing a bunch of things where how how pervasive it was in Nexium's materials and everything. Mm-hmm. But that's been kind of thing for a while. <laughs> Truly, I mean, the the entire 2010s was like women are badass. I'm glad you said that because in this in this uh, slide, there they note that there were comments made on Glassdoor by former Movers and Shakers employees alleging cult like tactics 
that are used and the CEO saying offensive things to multiple female coworkers. Uh, one Glassdoor post referenced the head of HR as a cult member. Um, there, yeah, the the VP, this Lauren Lorraine Doro, the VP of People and Culture, was an espion, which I guess is also known as a Nexium yeah, member. Yeah. Um, because of the ESP thing. Is that really it? Yeah, ESP is the uh, Executive Success Programs. Ah, uh, so <clears throat> yeah, I. <sighs> You could probably go on Glassdoor and search the word cult and find it in so many companies, especially I mean, the, the, a small marketing company. But even large, that's the whole thing is the, the success of these companies kind of hinges upon people buying into the, the brand and being like, I mean, even I have friends who work at Google and it's like, you see people who are like, I'm a Googler and I fucking, I wear my Google merch and I like, and if I was a Googler, I'd probably do it too. You, I mean, life is good at Google. Oh, or fuck Or at least yeah. it used to be before they started sure. pulling back on all that shit. But I mean, some of the best benefits in the world and work, work, uh, workplace things you could, you know, ever ask for. Right. So I'm with you when it's, it, it seems like a reach that, okay, so, cause yeah, they, movers and shakers, talks a lot there's a lot of references to being badass and badass women but they also mentioned a big part of their campaign for elf was spreading joy and creating joy and this the the around the word joy both of those things were a big part of nexium apparently is like keith rainier's thing was joy and like oh it's all about creating joy and badass women and like one of his uh, one of those programs, DOS, which was like the woman. I, I don't want to say subsidiary, but say it. it was like no, the, go ahead. it was say like it. the subcult of the cult <laughs> that was just for for women. Um, let me get see. out of here. This is the cult for women. Yeah, <laughs> this. Oh, it was called uh, Dominus Obsequious Sororium. It was a highly secret women's society within the organization. So that's kind of what they're alluding to. But even if, I, I feel like Spruce Point's thing here is even if the connection is uh, tenuous, is that the, that's not the right word I'm looking for. No, I think that's. Even if it's like, yeah, it's like yeah, not exactly strong, it could be enough in the age of social media, <clears throat> given the fact that a lot of Elf's fan base is... Right, all you need is one Elf girly being like, listen up, ladies. Yeah. It is over. We are now buying... I don't know, name another makeup brand. Uh, fuck. Come on, Mr. Revlon. Someone has another... Gr Revlon. Oh, that was actually pretty quick. I'm, yeah. I'm, I was just at Target I'm buying... I'm actually destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> I do love... Uh, so I, We're I mean, switching to Mac. Oh, here's one. Mary Kay. Am I right, ladies over 60? <laughs> oh, boy. So here's the, as you touched on, they're talking about the co-founder of Movers and Shakers having a long association with Nexium dating to at least 2011. My favorite 2011. makeup brand? Natural. You guys all look beautiful without it. Damn, dude. Fuck, that was good. No, seriously, you guys. No, but women actually hate that. Why? Because it, it doesn't matter what you think. They, my they, favorite they makeup wear brand? makeup for themselves. My favorite makeup brand? Whatever one you Whichever like. Whichever one you like. Uh, I beat them to it. Uh, but, but make yourself look like a fucking clown. See what I care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you look like a clown queen. Whatever you want to do, babe. But what? Bip? Yeah, whatever you want to do. No, I think that your cat eye looks good. I think you're very good at it. What? Women aren't sensitive about cat eye. So, <laughs> so they're 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 saying that not only do these guys have connections to uh, Evan Horowitz specifically has strong connections to Nexium dating back to at least 2011, they are still loosely connected, uh, at least through social media. They they oh, point and out. I think one of them testified <laughs> at a uh... trial. Yes, documentary evidence that Horowitz gave character testimony on behalf of Brandon Porter, the disgraced doctor who performed unauthorized human experiments for yeah. Nexium. The two co-founders appear to have been close with Allison Mack, who was sentenced to prison, 
and Nikki Klein, two central players in the Nexium cult. And they include a picture of Allison Mack, Nikki Klein, and then the two Movers and Shakers co-founders. So pretty strong evidence that these two guys... God, look at these motherfuckers. Yeah. We're starting a... We love being We're badass. trying to bring people more awesomeness. Yeah, we do love awesomeness. Um, so then they also employed at least one ex uh, DOS member who defended Rainier's branding of women. That's the cult for women. Yeah. So get out women of here. Women only. If you're looking for the mixed gender cult, it's down the hall. So there was apparently Movers and Shakers had someone on the payroll who defended Keith Rainier's use of branding women. Because that was one of the things that they did. They branded these to women. To bring each other closer. It was a bonding experience. I'm going to let you go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so this and the person's employment was during the time that it was well known by the public of Nexium's practices. Uh, wow, I did not know that Keith Rainier was ultimately arrested in Mexico, huh? So anyway, oh yeah, and here's the Brendan Porter, the guy, the doctor, right. who one of the movers and shakers, um, gentlemen. Yeah, Brandon Porter, the doctor who lost his medical license in New York for allegedly conducting these experiments, continues to support Nexium. He also, uh, he states Dude, on this his, is from Brandon Porter. Oh, wait, maybe you're about to read it. Yeah, his LinkedIn also states that he advises, he quote, advises, so this is a doctor who did all this fucked up shit, lost his medical license on his LinkedIn. He looks like a fucked up AI, by the way. Yeah. He, I don't, I don't know how to describe that man, but. He states on his LinkedIn that he advises the CEO of a mid-sized advertising agency in the United States. Wonder who that could be. And he says, I am an expert in the science of joy. I help people discover and grow their capacity for joy, no matter their circumstances. Gee, there's that joy connection again, <clears throat> man. Holy shit. And so Mr. Horowitz, the co-founder of Movers and Shakers, testified on Brandon Porter's behalf during his medical license review. So pretty fucked up. And Brandon Porter, whose social media profile says, like we said, he, advising the CEO of a mid-sized advertising agency, he frequently likes posts by uh, Horowitz. And specifically, he, he likes posts. He could just posts. be bookmarking them. He could be bookmarking them. He that's very good. He specifically also likes posts related to Elf Beauty. Um, so at the very least, they're, they're correct in saying that the co-founder maintains a connection to at least one person who is actively uh, trying to dispute the case against Keith Rainier and still continues to have ties to Nexium. Oh, babu. This is really embarrassing. I, I, I didn't know this before. Brandon Porter is actually my doctor. and I, uh, No shit. Yeah. Is he uh, a good doctor? Would great. you defend him to the New York Medical License Board? I would if they called. He's helped me find joy. This fucking joy shit, man. Well, so it gets a little hairier for the good folks at Elf because the CEO of Movers and Shakers appears to have uh, a bit of a relationship of some sort to Elf's chief marketing officer, Corey Marcia, Marsh. Come on, if you Marsh fuck up. Marsh is, uh, it's Italian. Marquisoto. <laughs> Marquisoto. Is that good? I like that. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't even know if it's Italian. It ends in a vowel. Is that usually the thing? If it ends in a vowel, it's Italian? No. That's actually that pretty good. Spaghetti. Confetti. Is that an Italian word? <laughs> yeah. Confetti? Oh, mamma mia, all this confetti. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, <laughs> so apparently, uh, Evan Horowitz and Corey Marquisoto, Marquis, Mark. Marquisoto. Marquisoto. Thank Corey you, Marquisoto. <laughs> have appeared together in uh, industry panels, and they seem to have a shared understanding. This is from Spruce, Spruce Point's thing here. They seem to have a shared understanding of a unique term called volofo. That's, uh, that's also Italian. Volofo. Which is, which is, I just love this, because they, they, they've got it's it. It's very Kofifi. Yeah, it's very Kofifi. They've got, they, she... <laughs> Evan commented on something from her like Facebook or her LinkedIn and just said Volofo, V O L O F O, with, with with rockets, with rocket emojis, <laughs> and then um she responded, Bamity, bam, 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 boom, boom. <laughs> Bamity, bam, bam, boom, and then she posted another thing with just emojis and he responded Volofo, Corey. And I love this because it just has it circled and says, "What does Volofo uh, mean?" Dude. 
I love the graphics guy at fucking Spruce Capital. What could Volofo mean? Victor- very. Vic- oh, very odd. Looking old. <laughs> I don't know. V- velocity on love only fans. See, but this is where I'm like, oh, <clears throat> this is th- this is where I'm like, okay, some of the stuff is a re- like. I thought they were gonna connect this to something. Like, do they do they tell you what they think Velofo is? No, they I, I, <laughs> like, <laughs> they really don't. They're just like, and also they've got this weird. Uh, I know. I think that uh, I'm it reading through it. And to, I'm like, okay, they they have a beard. <laughs> kind of grasping for straws here. Yeah, they've appeared together on multiple industry panels and seem to have a shared understanding of a unique term called Velofo. Oh, send them to jail. Yeah, send them to jail, man. <laughs> Short the stock down into the basement. Yeah, they lean into the other stuff, Spruce Point. I mean, you also, can hire us. We'll we'll truly, fucking spread joy fucking in your presentations. Here. Using like North Korean slave labor and like uh, a college admission scandal that got got two bullet points, but they were like, "What does Volofo mean?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. They like each other's posts on LinkedIn. Now there's a connection that's indisputable. Right. Yeah, because they I just skipped over it, but apparently the CEO of Elf went on to say that they really liked working with movers and shakers. Like, okay, that seems like standard fare. I mean, if you're gonna help my stock 10x, yeah, I'm gonna really like working with you too. No fucking shit, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I like how also they're getting credit for doing what's just what would otherwise be obvious. Like, hey, you guys should get on TikTok. You're a cheap makeup brand. Okay, go for young women. Yeah. Where are young women? And talk TikTok. about making them feel good. Yeah. So speaking of feeling good, that's they're they're again leaning into the whole joy thing. Apparently, Keith Renier and Nexium were all about joy. The science of joy was something he wanted to help people experience more joy in life. And then they've got. But this is my only problem. Like, am I naive or is it like joy is a pretty. True, but it is. I, mean, I know, I know, because they're connected to him and they're like doing this joy thing, but it's all, yeah. It could just be that they just took what they learned from, hey, I was part of this cult. And one of the biggest takeaways that I remember having the most effect on me was the concept of joy and shit. And obviously, if it worked on this, the, the followers of this cult, maybe it'll work on these. Uh, they're like, look, we're going to do Nexium without the human experiments and sex traffic. Yeah, we're going to make it just like lip stain and satin. We're going to actually spread joy. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to. Without all of the. Uh... Yeah, they're even go- like leaning into uh, Spruce Point observes that Movers and Shakers corporate branding is yellow. We also noticed that a picture of a co-founder Horowitz shows him. Yeah, that that a picture of co-founder Horowitz shows him donning a similar yellow sash. This is a potential indicator of movers and shakers' continued sympathy for the Nexium. Get the fuck out of here. He's wearing a yellow sash in one photo. That's enough for me. And because their branding on their website is yellow, ben, I've therefore... Got, I've got one word for you. What? Joy? Volofo. Volofo. <laughs> Volofo to you. Wait, what would this thing be? Velofo. Velofo. We're, pu- we're putting our hands together, audio listener, and making a V. Actually, I prefer like this. The cute tee-hee-oo-woo thing. Velofo. Yeah. So, Elf's marketing communications increased the messaging of joy not long after engaging Movers and Shakers. Uh, an article suggests that Movers and Shakers became acquainted with Elf in late 2019, and the joy messages began to frequently appear in Elf's public messages in January of 2020. Yeah, no fucking shit. If you hired this marketing company and they are taking over your marketing and a big thing is their fucking joy Dude, shit. And some of these are just like very... Uh, <laughs> it, joy is a word that people are going to use. Yeah, no so fucking this is kidding. It was so exciting to be a part of Republic's Grammy night and gratifying to work with a partner who shares our values of supporting diversity, inclusivity, and joy through individual expression. Senator to jail. Hold on, bitch. Isn't Did that you... Nexium talk? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Wait, show me your inner thigh. Do you have a brand? Sorry. That's... <clears throat> she does use it a lot. I yeah, will she say. does. She does. Well, because it, it became part of their branding. If, if that was their whole thing. Look, they, on the next slide, they're, they're fucking. But that's a fucking Christmas term. Yeah, joy, joy to, to the, the world. world. Yeah, yeah. 
Perhaps a total... Yeah, they even acknowledge. Bruce Point says, perhaps a total coincidence, but in late 2020, Elf's holiday album featured a remix of Joy to the World, and Elf tapped Movers and Shakers to design the campaign and produce the brand's first ever album. And then they go on to talk about how badass was also terminology used by Nexium's subcult of women, and uh, that... that uh, uh, Which we're finding out, you're not supposed to call women. Badass? Yeah. Why not? I don't know. Because of Nexium? I think it's like, you know... Let's take it back from Nexium. They no, no, it's not that. Nexium. It's like oh. at first we liked Cheryl Sandberg's Lean In. Now we're pissed at Cheryl Sandberg's Lean In. Women could have it all. Now you're not supposed to say that they can have anything, I think. Oh, okay. I should ask my mom what she thinks. <laughs> yeah. She's probably going to be like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, they they say Spruce intended or not, Spruce Point finds repeated references by the CMO of Elf to the word badass as it relates to women. She keeps talking about badass Bro, women. Elf badass was born to lady. disrupt, and she, Elf has a built-in renegade badass spirit in our veins. That's Corey Marcus Marcusotto. This doesn't sound like Nexium shit to me. This sounds like what it looks like: a woman in her fifties who's the chief marketing Truly. officer who just only knows how to. <laughs> yes, a big part of her thing is everything. yeah yes queening and and i don't fucking know so they go on to say yeah their their value their valuation is um i mean i would just say dude you don't even need all of this stuff i would just say wow the stock is 10x can this sustain itself maybe not i mean women women comment or people who use makeup comment and let us know how often do you switch brands i'm sure that it's quite frequent also get someone to make a bunch of tiktoks being like they use north korean slave labor yeah also <laughs> can somebody 10x our brand we're looking we're looking to grow our brand by 300 to 1000 percent. and to do that we're gonna have to spread copious amounts of joy man through individual expression. I spread joy everywhere I go, man. Is that true? Do you think Yeah, that's I do be true? smiling. I do be smiling. My favorite thing is but to is tell women to smile. I, I like to encourage women to smile. What better way to spread joy? Than to encourage a, strange woman, a stranger to smile? Yeah, say, excuse yeah. me, sweetie, smile more. Yeah, no, that's what I love to do. That's how I spread and joy. And they usually, they don't react positively at first, but then I just smile Which back at them. Which is frustrating for us. Yeah, it's frustrating for us. Because we're guys. trying to spread joy. Yeah, we're good guys. I said, you know what would be badass? You yeah. smiled more. Hey, you know what would be badass? Bitch, comma, try smiling. See what that does for your day. Hey, don't wear so much makeup. Yeah, and you would look better without it. <laughs> and smile more. So what do you think, Emil? Do you think that they're, they're I, I think that they're on to something in the sense, only in the sense that even if the connection is not all there it could be enough to tarnish the brand's reputation just for being associated with i mean we'll see if some tiktok girlies latch onto this as of now the stock is up if spruce point really wanted to capitalize on shorting the stock what they ought to do is, is call your daughter no they ought to pay some <laughs> tiktok girlies pay a tiktok girly a thousand bucks and have them start spreading infiltrate the news. The, hey girlies stop buying elf because they support nexium which was a you know was a what go ahead was it. a was a well to quote you it was a great thing it was a great thing before the government stepped in and stopped it uh, we were trying it was described to me because i i knew very little about it and um my girlfriend described it to me as a lot like sci like a more girlfriend modern counter. probably like six wait what the amount of times you said girlfriend this episode? Oh, this episode? Yeah. Not enough. Maybe if we had a girlfriend counter. Someone in the comments let us know. But uh, yeah, it, it's like, I was going to say a modern day Scientology, but Scientology is modern still around. Day. Yeah. Okay, but what did she describe it as? She said it was a cult. Women love That's cults, That's what she too. said? Her, her take on it was that it's a cult? She said it was the like cult this, is a cult? it was this crazy cult led by this guy. My girlfriend and was, said that the, the Washington Generals or whatever they're called are a football team. <laughs> but I didn't know anything about it. I thought I was thinking you of, knew it was a cult. I didn't. I really didn't because I, I in my head, I keep thinking of the purple pill, the Nexium um, acid reflux pill. 
And I was like, was it like some kind of, uh, was it like Herbalife or something? That's what I thought. I knew that it was like there was a bad guy. I truly did not pay attention to all of the Nexium stuff. It just went off my radar. I don't know what was going on. I, I really didn't know. I knew that it was bad and some actress got caught up in it. That's all that I knew. Some Smallville actress? Yeah, some, some actress was, and she, she boss bitched too <clears throat> close to the sun. And the heiress, heiress, Seagram, Seagram's heiress. Yeah, I was going to see, no, we have Jameson in here. We don't support Nexium, so we don't drink. Wouldn't touch the stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it either. Seagram 7, I don't even know what it is. Is that whiskey? Yep. Stupid. That's where they fucked up. So yeah, the, in, in conclusion. In conclusion, I'm uh, shorting. Elf? Yep. Well, my friend, if you were shorting Elf today, you'd be very sad. Do you know why? Because it's up. Just like I said. Everything is up. Today. Yeah. It's like a sea of fucking green. It's insane. It's like a Incubus song out there. Certain shade of green. My guy, I do not know that one. How does it go? It's so much better. Oh, yeah, yeah. When everyone is in, are you in? Wait, you got to take off your shirt and hold the mic like this. (laughs) I swear to God, dude, that guy pissed me off in college and high school. I'm like, you're just trying to seduce everyone's girlfriends. Working for me. Color, (laughs) Color me seduced. (laughs) <laughs> so cpi came out today for us two days ago for everybody else 3.2 percent which was lower than expected and so what did stocks do they fucking rallied hardcore man they love cpi they love it they love it when the cpi goes down why because it means the that stocks the f- when the cpi hits very good that's actually pretty good that is a, a layman's way of. Describing. I just did a real life meme for the for the audience. <clears throat> is that the kid yeah. getting blown away uh-huh. in the old TV show? Yeah, because um, it indicates that the Fed is probably done hiking rates, and hiking rates bad for stocks. Pausing or lowering rates good for stocks generally. And then uh, this guy from they're always trotting out people from the Fed, and this Austin Goolsby, what a name. Dork ass name. Dork ass name. Hey Goolsby. Hey Goolsby. Yeah, 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 man. You know, no wonder he works for the Fed. He's a fucking nerd. Hey Times Goolsby. 10. Hey Goolsby. Why don't you get me a pizza, huh? Fucking dork. Give me your lunch money. So he said uh, this year could see the um, could see the fastest non war related one year fall in U.S. CPI inflation in a century, with unemployment with an unemployment rate that never gets above four percent. He's saying that uh, inflation progress is continuing. Economic growth has been strong. The labor markets are vibrant. Positive supply developments allow blockbuster economic growth without added inflationary pressures. Soft landing. Sounds, sounds to me like this guy's promoting a pretty soft landing, dude. Getting a little uh, Jack nicholson You know, Goolsby comes out, man, and he says... I swear to God, this fucking Austin Goolsby coming out and saying it's a, it's a soft landing. I I don't know. I I don't. I'm. <laughs> what, did you just get self conscious? <laughs> it was good. I was doing it last night with my lady. I said, "Hey, well, that, that, hey, there goes the girlfriend <clears throat> counter again." And I swear to fucking God. Can we talk about Omegle? Yeah, I did you see this clip of the guy almost starting a fight in the Senate today? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, do you want to play it or not? It sounds like you want to play it. No. So go ahead and play Fuck it. it. <laughs> well, it's only a minute long. This is pretty funny. So you, 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 you had this senator, Mark Wayne Mullen, tried to fight labor leader Sean O'Brien at a Senate help committee after reading his tweet where O'Brien says he'd take him anytime, any place. Like he's self-made. Sir, I wish you was in the truck with me when I was building my plumbing company. Myself and my wife was... I'm just going to fast forward to it. Sir, this is a time, this is a place. If you want to run your mouth, we can be two consenting adults. We can finish it here. Okay, two consenting fine. adults. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> stand your butt up then. Wait, wait, play the whole thing where wait, he's no, like... Stop. I love when he's like... solution every problem. No, no, sit down. Sit down. Okay. You know, you're a United States senator. Sit down. Oh, okay, okay. Sit down, please. All right. Can I respond? Mr. Oh, Yo, United States senator. <laughs> if you're going to fight, you're going to do it out in the parking lot. 
after the Senate meeting is adjourned, and you're going to do it slathered in Astroglide so that it is most entertaining for us and for the American people. The loser has to trot his butt down Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue and get swaddled in the ass multiple times by the winner. Stand your butt up. Stand your butt up. <laughs> Stand your butt up. Say ass, dude. You can say ass. We're all consenting adults. Play it. Play it. Oh, was there more? Hold it. If Hold we can't... No, I have the mic. I'm sorry. This is Hold what it. he said. You'll have your time. Okay. Can I respond? Oh, no, you can't. This <laughs> I'd like to respond. Hearing. He did tell me to stand my butt up. <clears throat> can we talk about how poor Bernie Sanders' posture is? I mean, dude's like fucking 80 years old. God, somebody get one of them TikTok animal chiropractors on his ass we need to let old people retire i think Send yeah this man home there was one thing about midsomar that they got right which was that old people should jump off a cliff when they, when they reach. i've never <laughs> seen it and i wish i got that joke. oh dude you don't want to see it i know it's, it's too scary i yeah i can't handle it if you own midsomar on dvd or blu-ray Throw it off what the, cliff, the fuck like one is of those the matter with you? Who wants to rewatch that shit? You, Dylan? Yeah, once is enough, right? Let's see it again. Jesus Christ. Wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> you good? Yeah. Excuse me. So, why don't you tell us what Omega was? For those of those who don't know, Omega was, was a, a club for people to come together, grow themselves. Then the government started snooping around. <laughs> yeah, is that what they did? No, Omega was a it was a place where you could meet people online. It was a weird uh, video mm. chatting platform <clears throat> that would match you with people. Yeah, and it's it ran for fourteen years. Yeah. And it's shutting down in the wake of uh, of problems of, uh, the, you know, the most high profile one is it matched an 11 year old with a pedophile. Yeah. And yeah, it's not the only case, but sure. Yeah. But like that's, I said the most high profile. Right, right, right. Um, and. <sighs> yeah, there was a guy this year who was sentenced to 16 years in prison for eliciting sexual material from underage girls as young as seven over the course of three years. And uh, the BBC highlighted more than 50 cases of sexual abuse involving minors worldwide on Omegle since 2021. But, I mean, that's not unique to Omegle. I'm sure that that shit happens on Facebook, Twitter, no, Instagram. Like but the, the unique thing is, is that they were not protected under Section 230. So Section 230 is the, is the thing that allows people to be um, immune from suits when you when you host a platform like Facebook, Instagram, whatever, and so you're not held liable for every little thing that gets posted on there. You know who else is immune from suits? That fucking John Fetterman, man. Really nice. Thank you. Fuck. That's, I was just, I was just waiting for you to finish. Sorry. He had so, it holstered. <laughs> yeah, I had it holstered. <laughs> then quick draw the draw. I know, I love that one. Uh, too bad nobody's still listening or watching. Um... But yeah, so <clears throat> because it, it, you know, in order to operate these things and keep everyone safe, it would it would uh, create an insurmountable obligation of of going through every post and making sure you know everything was copacetic. Right. But, so he. I mean, they had seventy million monthly users. That's a that's a lot. Right. He started it when he was, this guy, Leif K. Brooks, was 18 when he started it. He said it was no longer sustainable financially or psychologically. He didn't go into detail, but he said that, yeah, safety and moderation tools uh, put some bad actors behind bars working with law enforcement. But at the end of the day, it was not enough. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you should re go, if you go to omegle.com, it no longer leads you to the, to the platform that matches you with people. It's his long statement. And... <clears throat> It's an interesting read as if you're kind of interested in the future of what, what the internet will look like and everything. And it's also very, you know, me and Ben were people who like the internet kind of like grew up around us mm -hmm. and it's obviously a very different thing now. So much more different. 
<laughs> what it is <laughs> this is such a so much more different yeah uh you used to get your jollies with like our apps buddy i remember when people first got the iphone and apps were a new thing and the hottest app was an animated beer where if you tilted your phone it tilted with the phone to make you look like you were drinking beer or like the the, the fake gun it was just like you would swipe your finger and it would shoot bullets. Yeah, that kind of stuff. That's what the early <laughs> internet was like. <laughs> That's what it was all about. What was it for you? Or downloading porn and having it take forever just to show an image? I don't know. I kind of think about like the those early internet users who kind of get at what what he kind of what Leif loved about the yeah. internet, which was that like connectivity for the first time he talks about how he grew up in rural vermont and it was like he never could have imagined being connected with all these people and then he built this platform where it's like wow you can all of a sudden be matched with people and have conversation with strangers around the world and uh this like information sharing thing that it like opened up and remember that scene in cable guy where he's on the satellite and he's yeah. like talking about the information. You can play Mortal Kombat with your friend in, in Taiwan. Vietnam, in yeah. Vietnam. <clears throat> the information superhighway. Like this yeah. promise that the internet has turned into just kind of a hellscape of posting shit and just immediately yeah. receiving a fucking dick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, do you rem- I remember, I didn't know what Omega was. I was first introduced to this concept from Chat Roulette. Yeah. And I just went on Chat Roulette and it still exists. So. And it's mostly see. dudes jacking? It, I mean, that's what it was a lot of the time back then. So uh, I'm going to... Let's let's see what we can get on here. Um, I've Whoa, goddamn. Choose who you want to... Oh, look. Here's some guy in France. I'm going to reject him. <clears throat> but he... You know, so he also talks about, like, the... How he felt a safety in, in Omegle and the internet. And, you know, because he, he, he says, as a... As a, survival of, as a survivor of childhood rape, I was acutely aware that any time I interacted with someone in the physical world, I was risking my physical body. The, inter- the internet gave me a refuge from that fear. I was under no illusion that only good people use the internet, but I knew that if I said no to someone online, they couldn't physically reach through the screen and hold a weapon to my head or worse. Hmm. I saw the miles of copper wires and fiber optic cables between me and other people as a kind of shield. One that empowered me to be less isolated than my trauma and fear would have otherwise allowed. So he kind of saw the internet as this place where it was like, it's safe to be. He felt like he could interact with people and whatever, if things went wrong, he was able to remove himself from the situation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he talks about, as we said, like he, he, they implemented a lot of practices where, uh, you know, with their own moderation, you know, I believe in a responsibility to be a good Samaritan and to implement reasonable measures to fight crime and other misuse. That is exactly what Omegle did. In addition to basic safety features of anonymity, there was a great deal of moderation behind the scenes, including state-of-the-art AI operating concert with a wonderful team of human operators. Omegle punched above its weight in content moderation, and I'm proud of what we accomplished. And then he goes on to say, you know, we worked with law enforcement agencies, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children to help to help put evildoers in prison where they belong, but <clears throat> it was never enough. You can't like, you can't win the battle against evildoers on the internet. I wish evildoers would were more like evil donters. I wish they just would don't. That's what I wish. Another, that would be my message to the world. That's another pretty good one. If I met Robin Will, or if I met since he's dead, if I met uh, Will Smith's blue genie, that'd be one of my wish. One of my wishes. I just want, I want to read the last part of this. Read it. The battle for Omega has been lost. Omega. The- you said Omega. No, run the tape back. I'm pretty sure you said Omega. I just want to make sure people know what we're talking about. Go ahead. Keep going. Eyes love face. Eyes love <laughs> face. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> The battle for Omega has been lost, but the war against the internet rages on. Virtually every online communication service has been subject to the same kinds of attack as Omega, and while some of them are much larger companies with, with much greater resources, they all have their breaking point somewhere. Mm-hmm. I worry that unless the tide turns soon, the internet I fell in love with may cease to exist, and in its place, 
we will have something closer to a souped up version of TV focused largely on passive consumption with much less opportunity for active participation and genuine human connection. If that sounds like a bad idea to you, please consider donating to, to the Electro Electronic Frontier Foundation, an organization that fights for your rights online. Dude, sorry, is there more? <clears throat> he just, but then he just thanks everyone and whatever. The, 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 his, his vision of the internet is dead. It is gone. Right. Like the, the spirit of that died. I mean, I think I would say that the first point where history started to change was when they went after Napster. And even now, like I remember at the time being pissed off, being like, you can't stop someone from just borrowing your friend's CD and like making a copy of it, which is essentially what this is. It's like, no, that was taking money out of artists' pockets. And but yeah. it was it's more, I don't think that it's right. It's okay to do it once in a while, but like, dude, I was pirating all of my shit. But I find it very interesting in the wake of like this, you know, in recently we've seen the the pushback with Reddit mm -hmm. um, and against their like API practices and all that. The crackdown with, uh, I mean, Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter. It's just a thing, a company that, and platform that people obviously joke joked a lot about hating and and being stuck there and whatever but i do think a lot of people enjoyed it and were um found it like a very useful tool and <clears throat> overnight it became something different it's mm -hmm. uh it's a you know remarkable different like the richest guy in the world was just like oh this is mine now it's mm -hmm. uh it's not this thing that you guys used to share and i'm going to start promoting I'm going to start, I'm going to change the algorithm. It's going to be a completely different tool. It's going to show you things that you don't, you never asked for. It's going to promote all kinds of. Yeah. It, it's also in spirit. I feel like his, his view of the internet is closely, closely aligned with that of Bitcoin maximalists in that it's this kind of libertarian view of what the internet should be and what it should be, which is how the internet kind of started. The, the first communities were created by people who were savvy enough with the technology to create them in the first place and that was their that was the spirit of it it's just like hey let's all get together and nerd out over these over this shit and inevitably humanity's got its poison and it's gonna leach into that you know shut down the internet i mean you can't but that would be sick i wish a shark would just bite the cables that run under the ocean We'd need a lot of sharks, I think. It's fucking insane that there's just cables running. There's like however many of them, a dozen that connect the North America to to Europe. Yeah, isn't that why Australian internet's so slow? Because it's got to go all that way. Yeah, but it's the speed of light, dude. I don't know why. It takes a half a second. You've been to Australia. Yeah. How was the internet? It was fine. It was fine. I didn't check to see if the water flows in the other direction. The whole time I'm there, I'm like. Oh, when I flush the toilet, I should notice if it looks funny because the water flows in the other direction. Dude, this says Australia is plagued by internet disconnections, dropouts, and slow download speeds. Damn, dude. I did not know that. Maybe, six, they, maybe it's because the internet can't understand their accent. Six in ten Australians have had issues with their service in the past six months. How did they fit six Australians inside ten Australians? That's they cut them up? a great question. We're six. We're stuck inside. Ben's on one, this one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, I guess that should, I, sorry we didn't get around to the financial advice, but we, we'll do it the next one. Oh, I fuck. promise. Yeah, it's okay. We're not going to put it in the title or anything, but, uh, and also we only talked about it like 10 minutes in, I think, right? Something like that. Anyway, we got a, we got a hell of a bonus episode. We're going to be talking about, uh, the butt wipe settlement of which I am a beneficiary. Is that real? Yep. Tell Benny me. Boy's getting paid by the good folks at Cottonelle. Tell me about it. They might have hurt my ass. No, I'll tell you in the book. Later. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Tell I'm also going to talk about, speaking of butt stuff, there was an airplane that I recently learned about uh, that uh, was so loud that it caused people to shit butt. themselves. <laughs> no, it caused, what? It sucked someone's butt? Is that what you said? <laughs> airplane sucks. <laughs> no. <laughs> also... Uh, <laughs> Just a bunch of other shit. We're just going to be goofing off. We're going to be boying out. I'm oh, not goofing off even in the Man, slightest. we didn't get around to showing off Jeffy B and his wife's fucked up photos. We'll talk about that in the bonus one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway. Love you very much. Hope you enjoyed this one. And if you're new here, smash that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And if you're old here, call your kids. 
Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah, if you're if you're one in the demographic who's old as fuck, hello, hello, mom. 